Can the new R Max really keep up with the demands of a program like DaVinci Resolve? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Kays and welcome to another Right Brain tutorial. So right off the bat, I want to let you guys know that this is not actually a tutorial. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because I have been seeing a lot of other videos on YouTube of various people uh, running tests and singing the praises of the new Apple ARM CPU computers that they just released uh, at the beginning of the month. And they're showing how you can work with 4K footage, with 6K footage, with 8K footage, even with 12K footage without any problems. And you can have some nodes and you can kind of create some really crazy grades and everything's like really, really great. And it's not that I am necessarily skeptical of those other videos and those individuals that are making them, but rather I didn't feel that any of those videos actually presented some real world scenarios that would be useful to a colorist or even an editor. So what I did is I ran out and I got myself a MacBook Air and this one happens to have 16 gigs of RAM. I did want the extra RAM. However, I also uh, didn't think that getting the beefed up 8 GPU machine was necessarily worth the extra 200 or $250 that Apple is asking for them, but I did want the extra RAM, so I got the 16 gig machine for my uh, purposes. As some of you guys might know, in addition to the CG work that I do, I'm also a colorist. So I thought, what a better opportunity than if I took an existing project that I've been working on and use it to test it both on my main workstation and then bring the same project over to my MacBook Air and see how the MacBook Air will do with it. So having said that, let's take a look. All right, so uh, this is the project that I have, and uh, this is, uh, I'm using like the latest uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, 17, and this is uh, build 15, which really matches the public beta release build number five. And on the MacBook Air, I'm gonna be running the same exact version, except it's 17.1 for like the ARM CPU, so just so you know. Okay, uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is a little bit about my main workstation configuration. So if I go in about this Mac, and uh, I have a, um, this is like an iMac configuration. It's really a Hackintosh, really and truly. Uh, the processor, it's an i9 9900K, um, eight core Intel CPU, which is slightly overclocked. I have 64 gigs of RAM, and then most importantly, I have a Radeon RX 5700 XT with eight gigabytes of RAM. So that's what my uh, main workstation is. It's not like a terribly powerful workstation, but it's typically more than enough for me to be able to do my work on. Okay, so uh, the other thing that I wanna show you guys is a little bit about what we're working with. We are here in Resolve in the color page, and if we go under my um, uh, settings, then you can see that we are working on a 4096 by 2160 uh, standard uh, 4K DCI timeline. We're working at a playback rate of 23.976. And uh, as color management, I'm actually using the brand new DaVinci Resolve color management workflow. Last but not least, I wanted to show you guys the camera raw settings that I'm using at the moment. So this is for the red. I typically keep my decode quality as quarter res good, which uh, for practical purpose is more than enough for me to be able to work with. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is just hit play and see a little bit how my main machine does as far as playback frame rate. So I'm just gonna hit play. It's a little bit of catching up and then we're fairly quickly up to the standard 23.976 frame rate. As far as color nodes go, I have, this is my standard uh, node tree that was uh, uh, inspired by uh, Walter Voltato, which was so uh, kind to kind of share uh, some of his settings. And what I also have is I have a pre-clip uh, where there's a node that's making some adjustments to the scene. This is uh, some scene adjustments. And then I have a post clip, which is also kind of tweaking contrast and saturation on a scene by scene basis. Um, I don't have anything for my timeline nodes. So most of the work is happening at the pre, uh, during the main node tree, and then in the post. 
Uh, also note, uh, note that I don't really have noise reduction. Now, noise reduction is something that can quickly bring most machines to a crawl, so I'm not using it in this particular project, and this is why I don't have any issues playing back at a full frame rate. Now, uh, the other thing that I can kind of show is uh, the type of files that we're working with. Most of the red files are uh, were recorded at a resolution of 6720 by 3780. Okay, 6720 by 3780 resolution, and they're all shot at um, 23.976 frame rate. And every once in a while, I am also using some ProRes files that came from the visual effects department. And the ProRes files were sent to me as ProRes 4444 at a resolution of 4096 by 2160, which is going to match my actual timeline resolution. All right, uh, let's do something interesting here. Let's go back to the camera raw, and I'm just going to set it to full res premium. As expected, when I have a full res debayer going on, my frame rate, even on my main machine, it's just not really able to reach. Um, real-time playback. Half res and see a little bit what happens. Uh, let's use half res good. I'm gonna hit save and once again I'm gonna hit play and half res good gets us to a 24 frames per second playback rate. So that's good to know. Okay at this point I am going to interrupt the recording because I'm going to render out my entire timeline and time it out and as settings, I'm going to set it up as ProRes 4444. And the resolution is going to be 4096 by 2160 DCI. Frame rate is going to be 23.976. And under advanced settings, I'm going to uncheck this bypass re-encode when possible. And I'm going to check for force sizing to highest quality and force debayer to highest quality. So this would be uh, typically uh, my settings for a master delivery. This is after I'm done with the color grading, which as I said, this project is not fully color graded yet, uh, but um, as you might have noticed, <laughs> but, um, but nonetheless, um, if you know, once the color grading is finished, then I tend to typically use this particular settings to export the master file. So I'm going to pause the recording right now. I'm going to uh, hit render. I'm going to quit out of OBS. I'm going to quit out of any applications that are running in the background. And I'm going to hit render on this uh, computer. And I'm going to see exactly how long this render is going to take. And then after that, we're going to move on to the MacBook Air and basically have the same exact project open and with the same type of settings, see a little bit how the playback does and see how long the render time is so that we can compare and contrast these two machines. All right, so here we are on the MacBook Air. And uh, if we're going about this Mac, you can kind of see I just updated to version 11.1 of Big Sur. And this is the MacBook Air M1 with 16 gigs. Now, I will point out that this particular model is not the one that has eight GPU cores, but actually just the base model that has seven. I was told that that doesn't make that big of an impact, but nonetheless, uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is here we are in Resolve, uh, this is Studio, and this is also 17.1 build 10, which is the equivalent of um, the public beta uh, number 5. So uh, once again, like uh, the settings are identical to what we saw on my main workstation, uh, 4096 by 2160 DCI, uh, 23.976 frame rate. And, uh, you know, everything else is pretty much uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, color management is DaVinci YRGB colored managed. And uh, as far as like the camera raw right now, let's start with the red files being quarter resolution good, just like what we had on the other system. So if I'm going to hit play, let's keep an eye out here on the frame counter. And pretty rapidly, we actually get into full frame playback. Now, keep an eye out because right now we're playing these uh, 6K files and every once in a while they do slow down depending on the nodes that I have in my node tree. Um, you can kind of see here that uh, once we hit these two clips that have uh, ProRes, then there is a substantial slowdown. So what I'm seeing here is that red files play back 
a little bit easier than uh, ProRes files, even when ProRes files hardly have any nodes on them. So that's something to keep in mind here. The node tree is the same as it was in my other session. Uh, I would expect that if we now bump this up to full res premium and hit save, that our frame rate is gonna drop substantially. So let's try that, I'm just gonna hit play. And yeah, as expected, it's now dropped to about a third of the playback speed. So we're no longer in real time. Let's, uh, let's bump it down to uh, half res good. and see how it does with that. Yeah, it, it, it never quite gets to the 23.976 that we had. So yeah, I mean, uh, what I'm seeing is that working in a you know, in an actual real world scenario, this is not ideal. Uh, it's certainly not yielding uh, real time performance. I would say that if I wanted to use this kind of footage on this machine, I would probably need to drop it to one eighth resolution. And, uh, and I think one eighth resolution will probably get me um, back to a, a full frame playback. And it does. Uh, let, let me bring it back to uh, quarter res good that I was using on my main machine as well. I do want to point out uh, that if we're in the timeline, in the edit timeline, the playback is substantially better uh, right off the bat. I'm going to um, render out using, once again, I'm going to use the ProRes 4444 at 4096 DCI and I'm going to uh, uncheck the bypass re-encode, so it's really re-encoding everything, and I'm going to force size into the highest quality and force the Bayer to the highest quality, and see a little bit how it does. Alright, so with the rendering finished, let's take a look at the results. folks. I'm a little disappointed with the results, unfortunately. I'm uh, disappointed that the MacBook Air was not able to complete the render at 4K. I was able to finish the render in HD, but when I cranked it out at 4K, uh, it was chugging along. The frame rate uh, that it was processing the data was roughly the same between the HD and the 4K export. Uh, but unfortunately, it reached the point where the frames per second render time just went down to zero, okay? And basically just stopped rendering new frames. I don't know if this is caused by the fact that Resolve 17.1 is still in beta. I will report it to Blackmagic and maybe they can look into it. But nonetheless, it was a bit disappointing that the MacBook Air was not able to complete the render even if it would have taken roughly four times longer than my main workstation. In addition, the main workstation that I use is not exactly what I would call a super beefed up machine. I have just a single 5700 XT GPU. I was planning to get a second one and then uh, AMD announced their new GPUs, so I decided to hold off and in the future I'm planning to add a 6800 XT GPU in my main workstation which is probably going to speed up the render times that much more. Now there is some silver lining to all of this. I for one was pretty impressed by the very respectable playback that I was getting on the MacBook Air. Uh, as a matter of fact when I went back and actually tested it without actually running OBS and the screen recording in the background the playback was very consistent at 24 frames per second using the raw debayer quarter good setting so I don't know like I mean I could see myself using this MacBook Air say if I was on location on a shoot and maybe at the end of the day I wanted to go back to the hotel room and review the footage or maybe even start assembling some edits, I think this could be a solution for something like that. Or alternatively, I could envision a scenario where maybe I have some overlapping clients or maybe I have some really crazy deadlines and I just need to keep cranking work out and I just cannot afford to have my main workstation just sitting and rendering. 
Uh, I could see that uh, maybe I could offload my session to my MacBook Air, especially if I need to, say, render a review uh, QuickTime for the client in HD, or maybe even something that needs to be uploaded to Vimeo. I could certainly see doing that on the MacBook Air, sending it to go on the background while I continue working on my main workstation. So overall, this is far from being a bust, quite the opposite. I actually am very encouraged by what I see, and I think that there is a lot of potential for Apple to come up with new processors, as there's already some rumors floating around about like an M1X that might be packaged with upcoming iMacs. And, uh, and I can see that maybe it won't be long before these new ARM CPUs are able to keep up with some of the faster um, you know, workstations from Intel or AMD. Most importantly, what I wanted to do is to show you guys some real world scenarios because as I said, I've seen a lot of these YouTube videos that on the surface seem to show that, oh yeah, like, you know, these things are crazy fast, you can do anything you want on them, but are kind of lacking some substance. So I hope that I was able to fill that gap a little bit and kind of show what is a reasonable expectation from these computers versus what is probably just too much for them to handle. At any rate, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.